Good afternoon and welcome to the OR Today webinar series. We're excited to have over 200 registered attendees for today's webinar. I want you to, I want you, sorry, I want to remind you today's webinar is eligible for one continuing education hour. The post webinar survey and certificate process are now automated. So the survey link will be included in the follow up email, which you'll receive about an hour after this webinar has finished. Once you've completed the survey, you'll be able to download your certificate immediately. One lucky attendee will win an Amazon gift card just for completing the survey. Okay, let's kick off today's webinar by giving an OR Today live surprise pack to the attendee that can tell me the answer to the following trivia question. Today is Halloween. What were jack-o'-lanterns carved from before pumpkins were used? Answer now using the questions feature on your dashboard. While you're answering, I just want to remind you to save the date for our seventh annual OR Today Live Surgical Conference, which will be taking place from August the 16th to the 18th, 2020, at the Omni Interlochen Hotel in Denver, Colorado. Join us to discover new opportunities, broaden your knowledge, and exchange ideas. For more information, visit ortodaylive.com. Okay, and let's see who the winner of our OR Today surprise pack is. And it is uh, Jaina Piri. Congratulations, Jaina. OR Today would like to thank our sponsor, True D. True D Smart UVC is an advanced UVC disinfection system that delivers one automated measured dose of UVC to cons consistently disinfect a room from one position, ensuring significant pathogen reduction in direct and shadowed areas, reducing human error and documenting disinfectant results for each cycle. For more information, visit true-d.com. Our pre presenters today are Alice Brewer, Clinical Director of Trudy Smart UVC, and Eric Grantham, Unit Director of Crossall and St. Francis Hospital. Alice, you may begin whenever you're ready. Thank you, Linda. Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining today. Today's webinar is going to focus on both UV disinfection and what it is and you know, why we're, we're talking about it, why it's been in the healthcare space. Um, in the particular OR space. Um, and then I will turn the conversation over to Eric at St. Francis Hospital so he can share with you what their experience with Trudy has been. So I am Alice Brewer. I am Trudy's Director of Clinical Affairs. I am an infectious disease epidemiologist by training um, and worked in infection prevention in hospitals before I joined Trudy's team uh, a couple of years ago. So I have definitely lived this on both sides and love speaking um, to my, my colleagues about uh, infection prevention and UV and, and the ways that we can do better for our patients. Um, I do think that uh, particularly in the clinical space these days, um, we can live and breathe our infection rates and um, sometimes it is, it's easy to forget that these are actual people um, that have come to the hospital to be made better and have left sicker um, than when they arrived. Um, about one in 31 patients currently contract a hospital acquired infection. Uh, that represents a significant number of um, deaths of uh, patients that end up having a longer stay in the hospital. Um, we know that a hospital acquired infection can increase the length of stay anywhere from two to 17 days. So that's a significant burden for both the hospital and the patient. Um, we do consider the financial costs of these infections as well. Over a billion dollars annually um, is being spent on these infections. And when it comes to reimbursement from CMS or other um, insurance uh, providers, you know, many of these expenses are not being reimbursed to the hospital. So the hospital has to absorb those costs. And uh, that's a lot of money that the hospital can use for equipment, for additional staff, for other interventions and measures to improve patient health and safety. So, you know, this really becomes a public health issue, but also a financial issue for hospitals. So specific to the OR, um, Almost 10 years ago now, the um, kind of prevailing opinion shifted to looking at the OR as a significant uh, component in preventing infection. So um, I think previously the focus was on you know, nursing care and care in the patient room and 
and the OR wasn't really looked at as a significant contributor to um, hospital-acquired infections. But for the last 10 years or so, we've been really looking more at that space um, and those disciplines to see what can be done to improve a patient safety and kind of reduce those infections that we're seeing in the hospital. And then about five years ago, AORN kind of went a step further and recommended that within the OR space and paraoperatively, the teams in hospitals should really start looking at emerging technologies for room decontamination. Because we're seeing that traditional cleaning, ter that, that terminal clean and the in-between case cleaning of ORs may not be getting those spaces clean enough. Um, so some of those emerging technologies that are out there include ozone, peroxide vapor, hydrogen peroxide vapor, UV light, which we'll discuss more in a moment, and then saturated steam. And all of these are considered adjuncts to terminal cleaning. We never want to replace that terminal cleaning process. That's extremely critical to making sure the, the spaces are clean. But we know that that's not maybe enough. And so the need is to look at what else can be done on top of that to just really provide as clean a space as possible. So part of that is this concept of fomites, which are essentially um, anything within the space in and around the operating space where the patient might be that could introduce a foreign matter or pathogens to the patient. Um, so in the OR, that could be the top of the light um, beams, could be the C arm if you're in a hybrid um, OR suite. Anything that, you know, maybe we're not thinking about cleaning as rigorously, um, but that could introduce some pathogen to the operating space. So we know that these fomites can serve as reservoirs of infection. Um, and so if they get near the patient, um, particularly uh, intraoperatively, you can introduce a significant risk for infection. So within the OR space, it really becomes critical that we're cleaning everything in the room. Um, because as we know, those risks are there from environmental contamination. That's been well established in the literature. Um, and the amount of risk is kind of variable on um, that threshold for contamination. Um, and are we cleaning to the point where we're below that threshold? And I don't know that we can say that we are um, with just a standard manual terminal clean. So, in addition to that terminal clean, we need to do something a little bit extra. Um, we talk a lot about high touch surfaces in the world of infection prevention and environmental sciences. Um, there's been a lot of research in recent years showing that there really isn't epidemiological evidence to show that one surface is safer or lower risk than another surface. Um, there isn't a correlation between how frequently an item is touched and the likelihood uh, that it would have contamination on it or that microbial load would be present. So it becomes critical that we really clean every surface. Um, and so all of this kind of ties together with that discussion on fomites and environmental risk and um, that cleaning threshold to make sure that we're getting a space clean enough that we can ensure that there's no risk of infection transmission from the environment within that space. And that's kind of where UV comes into the conversation in these enhanced disinfection technologies. Um, we know that cleaning is not enough. We know that every surface in the room needs to be cleaned. So how can we kind of bridge that gap um, between um, what we know needs to be done and, and what we can see is happening. So I'd like to talk through just some of the literature around UV and also some of the real world um, evidence and examples of infection reduction um, that have been seen once Trudy's program has been implemented. So this first article is um, oftentimes very eye-opening to uh, you know, people that are familiar with the OR space and these anesthesia machines. Um, 
this study in the American Journal of Infection Control found that when Trudy was utilized um, in both small and large ORs, uh, there was a two to four log reduction of bio burden um, on these anesthesia machines. Um, and that included many of the pathogens that are, are typically seen in these surgical site infections. Um, and you know, when I ask people how frequently they, they think their anesthesia machines are getting cleaned and all of the tubes and panels and wires, um, you know, I usually get a look that says, oh, I don't know that they're probably getting as clean as we want them to be on a regular basis. So adding that extra layer of cleaning that Trudy can provide really make sure that you're getting um, those devices as clean as possible. They're very close to the surgical field oftentimes. Um, so you want to make sure that there's nothing on them that could potentially pose a risk to a patient. Um, another paper from the UK looked at um, operating room infection um, and utilizing TRUD as an adjunct to their terminal cleaning process and found a three to four log reduction um, of MRSA and VRE within the operating room. And that included shadowed areas. So you know, those areas that might not be in the direct path of light, but maybe are the backside of a piece of equipment or the underside of the surgical table. Um, those spaces are still getting that extra layer of cleaning and disinfection. Um, so that's really important that we're addressing every single surface and space within the, within the OR. Um, in the last study, um, I wanted to share with you is from the Journal of Arthroplasty, and this is a fairly recent um, study. Um, it was an international group of orthopedic surgeons who got together and, and looked at a number of um, interventions and, and issues around um, surgical procedures and infection reduction. And they really looked at UV and they looked at the literature on UV um, and uh, what was out there in terms of evidence and agreed that using UVC for terminal cleaning of ORs is a good practice that's going to help reduce the risk of those of those infections um, that are sometimes seen within the operating room. So um, it's just a good practice and you know this demonstrates the good practice of looking at the literature, looking at the evidence and um, making a determination and you know, this group of orthopedic surgeons have kind of done the work for you on that front. So some examples from uh, hospitals around the country that are using Trudy um, in their operating space, um, typically as a terminal um, cleaning process. Um, so at the end of the day, usually. Um, the first one is from Providence Hospital out in Olympia, Washington. Um, they consistently use Trudy in their ORs at the end of the day. And after a very kind of brief time within six months, they were able to drive their surgical site infections to zero, which I was in the room with their um, infection prevention uh, coordinator for the OR and she was shocked. She's like, I've, I've never seen numbers this low before. Um, so they were very pleased with that. Um, they've been able to maintain that this, um, chart is from last year, but we have continual calls with them and they are still maintaining that um, zero or, or very low um, infection rate over time. Um, the VA in St. Cloud, Minnesota, did a, a little bit of a different look at this and we get these requests frequently to do a culture test of UV and, and Trudy and we absolutely always welcome that and want um, hospitals feel comfortable that these, this intervention is, is doing what um, they believe it's doing. So they cultured a number of sites throughout their ORs and endoscopy suites and patient rooms. Um, and they did that before and after using TRUD. And so you can see in that photo in the bottom right, on the left side is the plate um, that was cultured from services within an endoscopy room um, before TRUD was brought in. So this was after the terminal clean, but before TRUD was brought in. Um, and so, and then the plate on the right was after Trudy was used in the room. Um, and you can see it's a pretty dramatic difference. So from quite a few cultures to no cultures at all. And I can say that was pretty consistent um, 
across all of the results and, and various swabs that they did in their rooms. Um, it went from many cultures to, to zero cultures. Um, so it's, that's always a good dramatic visual. Um, I think that helps um, hospital leadership um, to see what's really truly happening um, when you use TrueD in your uh, patient spaces. Um, another hospital that's been using TrueD in their ORs is Flagstaff Regional Medical Center in Arizona. Um, this is another hospital that's using TrueD as a standard um, as within their OR cleaning protocols. Um, they use it as part of their terminal cleaning process. Um, and similarly to Providence Hospital, within three months, they were able to bring their results, um, their surgical site infections to zero. Um, another hospital, Mission Hospital in Mission Viejo, California, um, has been using Trudy robots in its ORs for a couple of years now. Um, and they really only had one deep organ SSI um, in all of their hip cases and then no surgical site infections in any of their knee replacements in 2016. And they are continuing, you know, with this track record of success. Um, and I think given the increased attention being paid to hip and knee replacement surgeries um, by CMS and the bundled payment program, you know, this becomes a really critical type of infection, uh, a really critical type of surgery. Um, that we want to prevent infections in, not only because of the potential impact down the road for the patient, but also for the financial um, impact on the hospital um, when those infections occur. And then the last hospital I wanted to talk about um, is Bon Secours in Richmond, Virginia. Um, and again, they're using Trudy in all of their ORs twice a week. Um, which we, we have some hospitals do that instead of using it every day. Um, they get to every OR two or three times a week. Um, and they have been able to reduce their surgical site infections by 50% um, by doing that. And something else I want to point out on this slide is that this is they're doing this as a part of a multi-level patient safety intervention strategy as many of our hospitals do. In fact, I would say most of our hospitals. Um, Trudy is not something that can be brought in and will single-handedly solve all of your infection issues. It really works best when it is a piece of a bundle and it's being used in tandem with a variety of other interventions and everything is kind of being monitored together and maintained and kind of implemented at a high level. So we say that Trudy is not a silver bullet. Um, I wish that it was, that would, that would be wonderful, but it really does need to be used um, in conjunction with multiple other interventions to truly see um, beneficial results for, for your patients. So now that we have heard a little bit about, you know, what Trudy can do, um, I do wanna talk a little bit about how you select a, a UVC device. Um, you know, there are many devices on the market. I have worked with a number of them um, before coming to Trudy. And as an epidemiologist and somebody who is very focused on evidence-based um, medicine and, and an approach, um, I always like to talk about the way that um, we should go about selecting um, a UVC device or really any intervention um, that you might be considering for your hospital. Um, this advice also comes from um, Dr. David Weber and Dr. William Ritala, who you know kind of pioneered a lot of this research in infection prevention. But their advice would be to you know choose devices that have been proven to disinfect actual patient rooms and have proven to um, reduce HAIs. So there are a number of studies out there and um, ways to look at this. Um, sometimes it's uh, the study is looking at disinfection of um, pathogen on a plate in a lab or inoculated plates placed around a room, which is important research. But when you are looking at a device to purchase to use in your hospital, you want to make sure that it has been used 
to disinfect real rooms in real hospitals. Um, and even better that um, it has been shown to reduce those infections when it's being used appropriately within the hospital. Um, I would also recommend that when you're evaluating the literature um, for devices or, or any other intervention, um, pay attention to um, the bias with the study. So um, who co-authored the study, who provided the resources for it. You know, it could be a really great um, randomized controlled trial, but if the authors are in any way connected with the device or the intervention under study, it really calls into question the validity of those results because the people authoring the study have um, a financial stake in, in the, the outcome of that study. Um, same with, you know, if, if uh, the company under study or the device under study provided resources um, to allow the study to go ahead, that also kind of calls into question how valid those results are um, because there's some tie to the actual company um, under study. And then the last thing, you know, I have to have to say as, a, as an epidemiologist is looking at the study design, um, which isn't natural for everybody to do, but I do have some suggestions for, you know, what to look for. Um, look at how the study is set up. So look at the control period um, versus the intervention period and are they as similar as possible? You know, you don't want, um, for example, a study where the control period is in a time when you typically see a lot of infections, like right now, um, we're into flu season, um, but then the intervention period is in a, in a time where we typically see low infections uh, because you've already introduced um, some bias there. So your, your intervention may not be as, as good as um, you think because you're studying it during a, a period of low infection. So um, just pay attention to the study design and does it make sense? I think, you know, many of us, when we look at these studies as clinicians, we can, we kind of pick up on things that um, maybe don't make sense to us um, in the way that we do our, our work. So um, as you're looking at devices, keep some of these things in mind. Um, so just to switch to kind of the implementation and the, you know, the financial logistics of this, um, these are expensive pieces of equipment. Um, it is capital equipment, and sometimes uh, those are, you know, it, it can be hard to obtain the uh, the necessary funds to make those purchases. Um, so having an ROI analysis can be really critically helpful to do that. Um, and the way we go about that at TrueD, for example, is to, you know, figure out what your infection rate baseline is, figure out what your goals are, um, and then design a program for your hospital, um, including how many devices we think you would need, how often they would need to be run, um, and create a cost savings and reimbursement impact um, that you can provide to your um, financial leadership, your quality leadership, to try and help um, sell that purchase um, and, and convince them to give you the capital dollars to make the purchase. Um, and Trudy not only provides this at the beginning of the process, so before the device has been purchased, but on an ongoing basis, um, so that you can show your leadership, you know, the work that's being done and the, the, the benefits that are being made over time um, and kind of prove that continual justification that, you know, this device is, is working and is doing what you need it to be doing. Um, and, you know, a great way for us to do that is, um, monitoring and um, creating metrics around you know the work that's being done and that's really important that's really the last critical step for any um, intervention that you employ um, you need to make sure that it's being implemented appropriately and that you can measure that implementation and the results um, so the way we do that at TrueD is we provide a lot of on-site training and education um, around what your goals would be. Um, and then we monitor that utilization um, towards those goals. Um, so we know where you guys would like to be and we kind of keep an eye on um, the utilization of the device to make sure that we're, we're moving in that right direction. Um, we can also correlate that utilization to HAI reduction 
um, through an NHSN group that we have. So we can actually, as this graph shows, we can actually overlay your utilization, which on this graph is in the blue, um, with your surgical site infection rate, which is the purple. So we can provide those graphs for you so that you can take those to your committees and, and say, look, you know, we, we invested in this technology and this is what we're getting from it. This is the return um, that we're seeing. So all very critical um, pieces of an infection reduction program. So now that you know a little bit more about TRUD and what is possible um, when you know, our program is implemented. I'd like to turn it over to Eric Grantham from St. Francis Hospital. Um, and he's gonna share with you his experience and St. Francis's experience with Trudy. Thank you, Alice. Uh, this is again, Eric Grantham. And I, I'd also like to thank um, OR today for having, having me on to uh, speak to something that has truly changed um, how we operate in, in our hospital. Uh, in St. Francis, um, you can go to the next slide, uh, please. Okay, so St. Francis Hospital Memphis, um, 479 bed facility. Um, we have a lot going on in our hospital, surgical weight loss, spine joint, heart vascular centers, uh, chest pain emergency center, center for robotic surgery, Cyber knife technology, um, and then on top of all that, we uh, also have a adolescent and adult behavioral health floors, uh, along with an LTAC uh, that is located in our hospital. Uh, so all of the areas that uh, you would think might have potential for uh, infection rate skyrocketing um, and we have at this hospital. Uh, so uh, again, rapidly growing area. Um, we have been well established in the community. So a lot of people think of us as their hospital, the community hospital. So this is where um, people come for care. Uh, why UVC technology? So when we first started looking at this, I have a unique perspective. I've actually been researching UVC or ultraviolet uh, disinfections for about 10 years. Uh, when we first started looking at this, uh, it was more of a wand. They were putting out wands that you would go through areas and, and wand down rooms and, and, and chairs and overbed tables and things like that. and. Uh, over the years, it has, you know, gotten a lot, um, <clears throat> a lot more publicity, and the technology has increased. So, uh, in this hospital, we started seeing an increasing number of, of inpatient cases. Uh, we identified it as being present in the community, especially the CDF and MRSA. Uh, so, we were requested by the quality department. And actually, our uh, chief medical officer um, came to me uh, and asked uh, to go find technology that would, you know, assist the hospital in reducing infections or the spread of infections. Uh, so that was a little unusual. You usually don't have your chief medical officer coming to the EVS director uh, to, for help. So I was uh, felt challenged uh, more than anything else to to try to find something that would. Uh, assist in this. So going to the uh, selection process of UBC, um, we did our research. We went and looked at several different companies. Uh, we did not just choose TrueD, uh, just, you know, at picking it out of a hat, throwing darts on the dartboard. Uh, we, we went through the process. We did the research, we did trials with each different um, device and chose TrueD based on several uh, criteria. Um, the proven results, um, in which Alice just went through uh, the results from, from across the country. Um, of course, customer service is always big. 
um, the construction of the device is one thing that caught my eye and most people and especially um, workers in healthcare uh, know that devices that you buy, any kind of equipment that you buy in the hospital uh, goes through a rough, uh, <laughs> a rough time. Uh, you, you buy machines, you spend a lot of money on, on devices and in two or three years, they start looking like or feeling like they're 20 years old and we've had them forever. And then you start uh, accumulating repair costs. Uh, the construction of the True D machine was one of the big selling points because uh, we looked at all of them. Uh, by far, this is the best constructed uh, that, that I've seen uh, from, the, from the wheels to the very top. Uh, everything is done first class. Um, if anything's going to get broken, uh, the EVS department is, is, is probably the, the department that's going to break it. And uh, we've had our machine for a year uh, and it looks brand new. Uh, so the uh, construction is there. Uh, very, like I said, very little maintenance. Uh, one thing that you will happen with, you know, some machines out there is that the lights or the bulbs will go out. Uh, you need to be careful. Uh, some machines, when the lights go out or the bulbs go out, it's down. And it's down until you get them replaced. Uh, with the True D, of course, they have light uh, bulbs that they, they give you, and they're very easy to change out if you do have one that has gone out. Um, but we've had ours for a year, and we've replaced one bulb. Uh, and it was very easy. I did it myself. So, it, like I said, the maintenance is, even if you do have a bulb that's out, the True D machine still operates. The cycle time may increase a little bit, uh, but it's still going to do what it's uh, made to do. <clears throat> so, you know, it's great support in the community. Uh, it does help, I will say, and be honest, uh, True D being a a local uh, Memphis company um, is a selling point for us, but True D is country, west coast to east coast, so uh, their service uh, follows them wherever, wherever they may go. Um, I also was very impressed with the technology, uh, the control panels from the iPad to the iPod, uh, you have the uh, safety barriers, covers for the machine. Uh, it's, it's extremely easy to keep the maintenance up on, on a True D. Uh, you have the monitoring tools uh, from True D, uh, conference calls. Um, for example, the first three months we had our machine, we were on weekly conference calls uh, with their home office uh, to go through our uh, weekly reports. It also is a, it builds in a uh, level of accountability. Uh, so make sure that we're using the machine as it's intended to be used and it, so that we can show results for the hospital. Uh, some of the issues that come up through our weekly conference calls was the logistics of moving our machine. Now, with the hospital the size of what we have here at St. Francis, one machine is not op optimal. However, uh, we were able to get one, so that was a plus for me. Uh, it would have been nice to have two, uh, but we had one. And so the logistics of moving the machine where it was needed uh, was a little bit of a problem. We settled on ensuring that our ORs were um, had cycles run in every room uh, within a week's time. So our OR is a 27 suite OR. And so we're making sure that we uh, run cycles in each OR room uh, at least once a week. And sometimes twice a week, depending on uh, the use of the rooms. The uh, implementation, uh, of course, we were able, we have a sister hospital that's uh, in a suburb of Memphis. And so we have a True D machine in, at that location as well. Uh, it was purchased in September of 18. Uh, the one here in at, uh, 
St. Francis Memphis was purchased in November of 18. And again, surgical suites every night uh, after terminal cleans are done. Uh, we we run the run the machine in as a as a cycle. Without the size of our surgery rooms, we're looking at 35 minute cycle times for each OR room, uh, so we're able to complete that uh, with no problem. Um, another another area that we're also using our Trudy machine is in isolation rooms, mainly our C diff and MRSA rooms. Uh, it's where we want to make sure, if at all possible, we get those. Now, again, logistics has been a little bit of an issue, but we have, through our education, uh, multiple operators being trained, uh, refocusing staff uh, on the importance of our cleaning cycles, uh, we've been able to manage to do exactly what we have set up back eight months ago to do. <clears throat> One good thing about our hospital is that the hospital staff actually bought into having True D. Uh, very supportive, uh, wants to make sure that uh, we're doing what's right for the patients. Uh, again, when Alice was showing all the numbers, uh, one thing that we have talked about in our leadership meetings over and over again is that behind every number is a patient. Or a family member, so that's what we have instilled in the in our staff and in in the hospital staff as well. Uh, that the reason we're doing this is uh, for what's best for the patient. Uh, so the buy-in from the hospital staff is key. Um, education uh, that we and ongoing support from True D uh, has been top-notch. Uh, information cards throughout the hospital. Uh, we have banners that we hang up explaining the technology that we have. Uh, patient education. Uh, some of our nurses in certain areas, especially our surgical floors, uh, will you know explain to the patients that hey, in the term they use, your room's been zapped, uh, which is you know lighthearted fun with the patient, but it, it does prove the point that we are using. Um, the True D and the UV technology uh, to take care of our patients and to make sure that they're safe while they're here. Um, the reports, again, like I said, the reports that we get from True D are, are very well done. They're easily laid out um, along with our conference calls. Not only was it just the EBS department, we also included our infection control department, our quality, uh, and the surgical uh, director was on most of the calls as well. It is imperative that if, when you start looking into UV uh, disinfection that you get all the key players involved with what, what you're trying to do. Again, just as Alice has said, this is not the silver bullet. This is not going to automatically make infection rates, AHIs go to zero. However, um, with the cold weather, weather coming up, it's just like putting on that extra sweater or that heavy coat and that's kind of what the True D machine is. It's just another layer of protection that you're using uh, again for your patients. So what's the community perception um, here at St. Francis? Uh, we basically are telling our hospital and or our hospital community and our patients that we are doing or we're giving them the best technology that's out there, the most up-to-date technology uh, to help them keep to keep the patient safe and to heal faster. Um, as far as infection rates go, I can go over just a few numbers. Not you know these are not hard fast numbers, but this is something that we pulled from the quality department earlier in the week. Uh, and our measuring dates are from January of 2009 or 2019 to uh, August of 2019, and we compared those. Uh, time frames with the 2018 um, numbers. So, so far in 2019, from January to August, we have no surgical site infections, which is a decrease from last, uh, the 2018 year. Uh, as far as MRSA goes, we have decreased uh, the MRSA by one. 
And as far as the, the C. diff uh, rates, uh, 2018 to 2019 has decreased by 10 C. diff cases. So that is, you know, a lot better than what we anticipated. Uh, we were hoping for a small decrease, and so far we're seeing large decreases. And again, uh, as, Al as Alice explained, this is not just because of True D. There are other things that your quality department needs to put in place. The EVS department should put in place, and 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 nurses, uh, your nursing staff, all staff in the hospital uh, should be aware of, you know where they are, what causes infections to spread, and um, just following standard procedures. So um, as far as improvements in our uh, quality and safety sites, uh, we were recognized in July of 2019 as we earned high performing rating from the U.S. News and World Report, uh, St. Francis Hospital. And uh, again, our, our infection rates are going down. Uh, receiving A's in leapfrog, so uh, we we are making the making the jump from you know a good hospital to a great hospital. Uh, the last thing I'd like to talk about is other uses for the True D machine. Um, something that we have learned as we have used the machine and and when we have downtime, wheelchairs, IV poles housekeeping carts, and in, in waiting rooms, uh, which is where a lot of infections, bacteria live. Uh, pull all your wheelchairs and IV poles into a storage room, uh, run a cycle with the True D machine, and I mean, it's just, again, that extra layer of protection. Waiting rooms at night that are small enough uh, that you can just roll it in, run a cycle, uh, it, it has, it will show the results uh, if you continually do it along with your standard operating procedures in cleaning. Future goals for our hospital, I would love to add a second True D uh, machine uh, one and have one just dedicated to the OR. Uh, that way we could do possibly every OR room every night would be ideal uh, for me. Uh, and then the second, um, True D device would be used throughout the other hospital in isolation rooms or just regular clean rooms um, in GI labs, uh, any ER rooms that we may have down, uh, just any IR rooms, anything in radiology. So you just it, you could use it throughout the entire hospital, and that's kind of our goal uh, going forward. And that is like, the end of my presentation, and thank you. That's great. Thank you, Alice and Eric. Um, we have had some questions in. So the, the first question is, can you explain the importance of a measured dose of UVC? Yeah, I will. I can take that. Um, so a measured dose um, of UVC is essentially, you know, think about it the same way that you would think about prescribing, let's say, an antibiotic to a patient um, to get rid of an infection. You need to know, you know, in order to eradicate that infection, you need to know um, how much antibiotic to prescribe and for how long, um, because you don't want to give too little and not get the infection, and you don't want to give too much um, and end up, you know, causing problems um, because of an overdose. Um, so making sure that you know exactly how much UVC is being put into the space um, in order to reach every nook and cranny and the shadowed areas and um, all of the, the spaces from the ceiling to the floor um, is really important. Um, and Trudy is the only device that provides that measured dose with other devices. Um, it's left up to interpretation by the user um, to decide um, how long to let the device run for, or um, how many locations in the room um, to place it um, to make sure that that dose threshold is being met. Okay, that's great. And this one I think is probably for Eric. Uh, what factors contributed to you choosing True D as opposed to other technologies? 
again, a lot of the technology uh, that uh, Trudy provided, um, also the education part, the support, ongoing support uh, from the Trudy. Uh, we actually had, uh, when we were struggling with our logistics, uh, we Trudy provided us a, uh, I guess a logistics expert, so to speak, uh, to come out and, and work with us for as long as we needed to go through our processes. And and they were one of the only ones that provide or at least sold that to us and, and, and presented that as an option uh, going through because when you bring something on that's brand new and that you've never used before and you know it's going to affect your operation, uh, you are kind of in the wilderness and you need to have somebody guiding you through on the best ways, best practice uh, to use this machine. Uh, other companies did not, you know, t did not really talk about that at all. Um, of course, again, one of my big selling points to me was the, uh, the building of the machine. Um, how how well it was constructed um it's just again uh that's something that i see di daily uh that not just machines that i use but throughout the hospital a lot of devices that we use in hospitals are not always treated like they should be and so we needed something that was strong and could take the abuse that unfortunately is going to happen in the hospital uh, to a device. Uh, it gets pulled around, it gets knocked into, you know, walls and uh, other pieces of equipment. Uh, no matter how careful you're trying to be, uh, hospitals can be a busy, busy place. So uh, the construction of the machine, the support, uh, and then of course, you know, the proven uh, success that Trudy's had with all the studies that they have uh, have done is uh, uh, very impressive. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Eric. Um, uh, another question for Alice here. Can you explain more about the benefits of enhanced terminal room disinfection study and its results? Yeah, so this was a randomized controlled trial that was um, the first studies were released in uh, two years ago in 2017. Um, it was conducted um, with $2 million of funding from this, the CDC um, at the Duke University, Duke University hospitals and some of their affiliated hospitals. So it was nine hospitals in total. Um, and they used Trudy on all of their high risk isolation discharges. So C. diff, MRSA, um, BRE, any of those kind of MDRO um, pathogens that tend to stick around. Um, what they saw was that uh, by using TrueD um, in those on those specific isolation rooms, um, they reduce the risk of acquisition or, or infection um, by around 30%. So they're knocking they knocked down the risk of infection um, to patients in those rooms, um, and they also saw a decrease in the incidence. So the act their actual numbers of infections went down um, for both C diff and for VRE when they were um, adding Trudy onto their, their standard terminal cleaning. So um, really significant for both the risk um, level of patients, but then also hospital-wide, you know, the number of infections actually decreased as well. Okay, that's great. Uh, another question here is, do you know the frequency of TRUD use in the OR for hospitals that drop their SSI rate down to zero? Um, yes, I can tell you that um, the Providence Hospital that dropped it to zero, they use it nightly um, in their ORs. Um, I believe that is the case for most hospitals that, that get to zero, but as Eric mentioned, they're not using theirs nightly, um, but they're still um, at zero infections. Um, so it really is dependent on the hospital and um, what your kind of current processes and logistics look like. Um, the best case scenario is to use it every night, but you can certainly see those um, zero results if, um, or get down to zero if you're only using it once or twice a week in those ORs. And, and Alice, I would like to expand on that a little bit. You know, our that was one of another one of my goals is going forward is to increase the utilization of True D. Uh, 
right now I think our utilization is around 30 to 40 percent you know that we're using the machine while it's here uh, I would love to increase that to about 60 percent uh, again that's when you have to really start looking at how you're using the machine who's using the machine uh, and in different ways uh, to work around your your workflow in, in your department uh, to increase the utilization because uh, I honestly believe the more you use uh, the the ultraviolet um, disinfection technology the uh, the better off the hospital is going to be okay that's great and another OR question what OR specific SSI reduction initiatives have you seen to work best in tandem with the true D um a lot of it has to do with kind of the interoperative procedures. Um, we've seen some hospitals try and reduce the number of times people are entering the OR. I know that was a big problem when I was in the hospital. Um, you know, you'd see, you know, the door would open 20 times, open and close 20 times because you had people coming and going. Um, and we know that introduces a lot of infection. So that's a big one, um, trying to knock that down, knock that that number of, of entrances down. Um, also, um, I know that irrigation procedures and hair clipping procedures interoperatively or, or pre and paraoperatively um, have been implemented at the same time that, that Trudy has been implemented and those are things that we know can help reduce infections. Okay, that's great. We've got time for one more question. This is for Eric. Does St. Francis use the True D in its endoscopy unit? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Yeah, does St. Francis use the True D in its endoscopy unit? Uh, yes, we, we have before. Again, with the um, we only have one machine, so we have to be very uh, strategic on where we use it. But yeah, yes, I mean that's that's one of the, again my goal of mine is to get the uh, True D machine in every part of the hospital uh, at least once a week uh, to to disinfect and just again add that extra layer of protection uh, for the patients. Okay, that's great. Uh, well, our time is nearly up. So thank you once again, Alice and Eric, for a great and very informative webinar. Uh, and thank you again to our sponsor, True D. Just another quick reminder that the post-webinar survey and certificate process is now automated. So the survey link will be included in the follow-up email, which you will receive in about an hour's time. Once you've completed the survey, you'll be able to download your certificate immediately. One lucky attendee will win an Amazon gift card for completing the survey. Um, any questions we didn't get time to answer, I will be sending to Alice and Eric, so they will reply to you offline. If you have any questions, please contact us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. For more information on our upcoming OR Today webinars, please visit our website, ortoday.com forward slash webinars. So thank you once again for joining us today. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you next time.